Okay, what do you say we find us some roots? Now we're working in chapter section 6-4 titled Nth Roots. And in this video, we're going to be dealing primarily from page 408, uh, examples 1 and 2, uh, where we're going to be finding roots. Uh, and in the second slide, we're going to be used, showing some examples where we have to simplify using absolute value. So let's start. We're first asked here to simplify plus or minus the square root of 36x to the 10th. All right, so we got plus or minus. Starts off pretty easy because we can see 36. 36 is the perfect square. 6 times 6 is uh, 36, and negative 6 times 6 is 36. And so we've got a 6, and but we still have to take the square root of x to the 10th. Now, while I'm at it and while I'm thinking about it here, unless we've got a number right here, we're going to assume it's a 2. In other words, we're taking the square root of it. Now, you may remember when we were, if we were to raise the power of an exponent, power of a power, we multiply those. So if I was trying to take, uh, um, if I got x squared raised to the fifth power, well, then that equals x to the tenth. I multiply those. But if I'm taking the root of that, I'm going to do the inverse. I'm going to divide. So I've got 10 as x is raised to the 10th power. We're trying to take the square root of it. So I'm going to take the 10 and divide it by 2. And I'm going to end up here with an answer of x to the 5th. Okay? That seems simple enough. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we're asked to simplify negative the square root of in parentheses, y plus 7 raised to the 16th power. Well, I'm going to have to keep my little negative sign out here in front of this. Uh, the y plus 7, it's in parentheses. There's not anything in there that I can uh, simplify because i got a variable by itself. 7 is a prime number. So I'm going to keep my parentheses. So I've got y plus 7. Now, I got, I'm taking the square root of this expression raised to the 16th power. I'm going to take 16, divide it by 2, and I'm going to end up with 8. And so my answer here, simplifying this, is negative y plus 7 raised to the 8th power. So let's see. Let's look at another one here. This is just kind of for fun. Let's say we're asked to take the square root of negative 16. y to the fourth. Well, I'm trying to take the even root of a negative number, and that doesn't work. Because even though 16, ignoring the negative symbol for just a moment, even though 16 is a perfect square, that's 4 times 4. Well, positive 4 times positive 4 equals 16. But also, negative 4 times negative 4 equals 16. And so here I'm trying to take the even root of a negative number. And that's going to bring me back to our old friend, the imaginary number. It's because you remember I. And I is the square root of... negative 1. So, simplify this. I'm going to take the square root of 16, which is 4. I've got i, which is the square root of a negative number. And i got y to the fourth. I'm taking the square root of it. I'm going to take 4 divided by 2, and I'm going to end up with y squared. And there we have simplified it. So don't get thrown off if you try to take the even root of a negative number. Okay, well, let's look at a few more, two or three more. Uh, but this time we're going to have to simplify using absolute value, uh, and we're going to discuss what that means. So let's start off this. Let's say we're asked to take the square root of 36, y to the sixth. All right, now, one thing, let's reflect back to those previous two examples. That first example, we had plus or minus the square root of 36, 
x to the 10th. But we had that plus or minus symbol out in front of the radical. And in the second example, where we were asked to take the square root of, uh, in parentheses, y plus 7 raised to the 16th power, you may recall we had a negative number sitting out in front of the radical. If there is nothing in front of this right here, then we got to assume they're asking us to find the principal root, okay? And that principal root cannot be negative. But let's go ahead and then proceed here and see what we got. All right, so we know the square root of 36 is 6 because 6 times 6 is 36. And we got y to the 6th. And so we're going to take that, the uh, exponent 6, 6 power, divide it by 2 well, because we're taking the square root of it. And that's going to give us y to the 3rd. <coughs> but we got to have the principal uh, square root, which must be a non-negative. In other words, it must be a positive number. But an odd number, a, a number raised to an odd power can be negative. So, for instance, or we can say a negative number raised to an odd power can also be negative. Let me walk through a couple of examples of that. Let's say that uh, we're taking the square root of 4. Well, that 2 times 2 is 4. Positive 2 times positive 2 is 4, but negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Um, but our principal re uh, root, no matter what, the square root of 4 is always going to be 2 uh, as non-negative. But what if I'm taking the square root of 8? Well, if 8 is a positive number, uh, well, 2 times 2 times 2, I'm not taking the square root, but the, th the cube root of 8, 2 times 2 times 2, and it's positive, well, that equals 8. But what if it was a negative 8? Well, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, positive 4, but 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So if I'm taking the cube root of negative 8, it's actually negative 2. Okay, but we're here, we're taking the even power we're taking an even power, uh, the square root of y to the 6, and I take this 6 and divide it by 2, I got y cubed. So now to ensure that this is going to be a non-negative number, I'm going to use my absolute value symbols, and I got the absolute value of y cubed. So my correct answer here uh, in taking the square root of 36y to the 6 is 6 times the absolute value of y cubed. Okay, let's look at another one, a little bit more complex. Let's say that we are taking, or we're asked to find the fourth root, still even, of 16 x minus 3 raised to the 12th power. All right, let's, think, let's break this down. So if I'm taking the fourth root of 16, well, 2 times 2, 4, times 2, 8, times 2, 16. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. And x minus 3, well, that seems easy enough. So I'm going to keep that parentheses, x minus 3. I'm going to take this 12 here, this raised to the 12th power, divide it by 4. But when I do, I'm going to have x minus 3 raised to the third power. And again, that it is possible that that's an actually a negative number. But I didn't have anything out here that indicated plus or minus or negative. Uh, so I've got, to, it's, I've got to make this a positive number, make sure that it's a positive number. And I'm going to do so by putting in my absolute value system, then my parentheses, x minus 3. raised to the third power. Close my absolute value. And so there's my answer for that particular type problem. Let's see, let's look at one other here. What if we're asked to take the cube root of negative y minus 9 
to the, raised to the ninth power. <coughs> well, this is not an even root. This is an odd root. And I don't have to worry about imaginary numbers because it is possible to take a cube root of a, or an odd root, in this case a cube root of a negative number. And so my answer, I've got negative. I can leave it. I got in parentheses y minus nine, and I take this uh, the y minus nine raised to the ninth power. I just take the nine divided by the three, the cube root, and I get three, and boom. I don't have to worry about it. But on even roots, we have to be thinking about the plus or minus. Is it a negative? Am I asked to find the principal square root? And if so, if I'm going to end up with an odd exponent, i got to put it in the absolute value symbols. We'll take questions on that.